Uh, my name is Jennifer Williams and I am originally from New Jersey. I was born in Livingston, New Jersey, but I have lived in Scotland since 2001 I moved here and I write poetry so I publish under the name J.L. Williams and my second collection just came out a couple months ago. It's called Locust and Marlin and I also work at the Scottish Poetry Library where we are sitting today and the library is an absolutely beautiful and amazing place. It is a building dedicated solely to the art of poetry and holds a collection of about 50,000 poetry books and objects and is a very special place. And I love living in Scotland. Edinburgh is a very, very gorgeous city and it has not the greatest weather, though every once in a while there's a nice sunny day which makes it all feel worthwhile and um, hmm, I find it very inspirational to live here. I have heard many people say that my accent has changed since I've been here and I had that um, hit home to me when I was home in New Jersey one day a few years back and I went to a restaurant very near to where I grew up and I went to order a um, my meal and the waitress said to me oh where are you from what a beautiful accent you have <laughs> and I was like I'm from here but I guess there's that funny thing I'd heard this statistic once that when you live in a place that's not the place where you're from for more than eight years I think apparently you have no control it happens automatically your accent starts to change or that's that's the point at which it officially has shifted in some essential way but I've heard people say to me that I say my teas now more than I used to I think I would have said water before and now I say water um, and what else I have a tendency to say I which is probably totally ridiculous because <laughs> I have no business saying I instead of yes but that's probably what a Scottish person would say um, yeah I don't know if I should what else should I say? Is that enough? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's plenty. Mm -hmm. um, and if you wanted to talk a little more about your poetry, you're oh. more than welcome to. Or, but if you feel like you're good, like okay. we can also cut it out. Um, so it's really it's, it's 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 up to you. Oh, I'll maybe just say a few things. Just, um, I've been writing poems since I was little, and. I love poetry. I, I think it, um, someone gave me a book of Shel Silverstein's poems when I was quite little and something about them just went pew, and I knew from, I don't know, that was probably second or third grade and I knew that that thing was for me. And there are many poets I love and admire. Um, I think that kind of early 20th century imagist poetry like Ezra Pound and Eliot was important for me early on, but there's some uh, there's an American poet I studied with at at college called Frank Bedart, and he was he's an amazing poet, and he was a great inspiration to me. And he showed us some po poets like Louise Glick, who also became very important to me. And my first book was about it was based on Ovid's Metamorphoses and used mythology to um, look at a kind of uh, the idea of, of more modern concepts of change and that book is called Condition of Fire but that was I think very much um, inspired by Louise Glick's use of mythology and incorporating that with modern stories and um, yeah and now my whole life because I work here as well as the program manager at the Poetry Library is very much about creating platforms for people to read poetry and sharing poetry uh, sharing Scottish poetry with the rest of the world by um, helping Scottish poets to uh, do readings and doing interviews with them, podcast interviews, which you can find on the Scottish Poetry Library website. And also we bring poets from around the world to Scotland to share their voices with a Scottish audience. And it's been just extraordinary for me as a poet to be able to have that kind of access um, to 
really these brilliant poetic minds from around the world and to be able to share my work with them sometimes too. So I feel very, very lucky. <laughs> so I just wanted to share with you one poem from uh, my book, which is this one called Locust and Marlin and this beautiful cover my friend Anupa Gardner made. And this is a poem that for me, I think really relates to the idea of uh, realizing where home is. The Veil. I left the world to find the world that we had lost and lost the world again, as one must, perhaps. I never knew how beautiful my own country was. We have a small space of time in which to touch. There is a veil and beyond that an old metal ornate grating and the heat comes from there and the dreams. The gears spin and no matter how often these planets align, it is you who must accommodate to love the sensation of sunrise because it will not rise forever, even in California with the oranges dripping off the trees. The ink runs out or runs dry. I learned to live and now I am learning to die. The taste of the wine. The ink runs out or runs dry. I learned to live and now I am learning to die. The taste of the juice on your lips, that I will never forget.